All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our master class. We are so thankful that you have decided to tune in with us. Let's adjust our screen just a little moment here. Okay, you know the drill? Comment in the chat, let us know where you're watching from. We see some folks are gathered on here. Melissa Rowe, Patty already on. Okay, please comment in the chat here. I'm gonna type and welcome you and then we'll get into it for this evening. Okay, Gonzo says here on the road, you guys are traveling, be safe. This is presentation number four in our mental and emotional wellness series. Presentation, let me type it in here. Okay, Melissa says, hello, great, how are you doing? Thelma, I am from McAllen, Thelma, how are you doing? Greetings to you and your hubby and family. God bless you. Okay, Munit, hello, welcome, how are you doing? God bless you. Martha, Austin, Texas, blessings to you. Raul, blessings, thank you, good night, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Awesome. We have an awesome guest for you. Of course, I'm going to turn over on the slide in just a moment. Barbara from Mission is also watching us here. Let me broadcast some of your stuff so everyone else can see it too. So you know I'm, I'm reading the real deal. Actually, well, you can see the comments here. I know you're going to love tonight's presentation. I really i have looked at the slides and I've been blessed already. So I can't wait for us to get into uh, the broadcast for this evening. I hope you had an awesome day. I, I, I think everyone has had a great day. Actually, Barbara and I were just on a, um, a meeting not too long ago. We had a board meeting. And so right from that, we are here tonight. So I appreciate your uh, commitment there, Barbara, for being here with us tonight. You're a trooper. Thank you so much. And I uh, try my best to look a little different. I just changed shirt. I was with one shirt for the board meeting. Now I'm a different shirt here. Uh, Loida is watching from Toronto, Canada. Hey, how are you doing? How is Canada? How is the weather there? Thank you for watching all the way from Canada. Amazing. Amazing. So here's the drill. A few more instructions. Okay, so here's what we do. This is a master class, a five week master class. That means 10 presentations. Tonight is presentation number four. We are dealing with secrets to mental and emotional wellness. Each night we bring on different uh, presenters. All of them are very well credentialed, as you are going to see when I bring up the PowerPoint slides. So just in case, if there is any internet um, con uh, connection problems, or by chance your connection slows down, what you want to do, if you're on your mobile device, your cell phone, your uh, tablet, or anything like that, put right above on the um, screen here, there should be a little button that says connect or reconnect. You want to click that. If you're on your computer or your laptop, what you want to do is up in the upper left-hand corner, there should be a little circle thing that says refresh, or if it might be on the right for some of you, on my computer, it's on the uh, left-hand side. You want to click refresh, so that way you'll be able to get reconnected. So, so far we are good. You are hearing me well. So that means our internet connection is pretty good. Luther, Elder Luther Charles is on here. Thank you, sir, for joining us. It's good to have you. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint slides. Um, my guests and I are going to go down to your bottom right, and you'll be able to see our slides. Again, uh, if you have questions, at the end, she will be taking uh, questions, so please write them down or, you know, just jot them down somewhere mentally so that we can um, take your questions and answers will be following that. Awesome. So let me see here. I like to give shout out to anyone else, so let me just make sure I haven't uh, forgot anybody so far. There's a few. Uh, uh, Hector, I think that's how it is, E-K-T-A. So Hopefully, I didn't butcher your name, but I tried my best there on that. Uh, I think we already mentioned Patty. We have Gonzo on here, Martha, Munit, Barbara, Raul, and so forth. Melissa, always a trooper as well. You guys have been faithfully coming out to these uh, presentations, and I hope you are putting them to good use. Okay, 
So let's begin. So this is going to be, uh, again, some of you have asked for the uh, recordings. What we do is this. Uh, again, this is primarily for students. So what we do is we allow only for a 24-hour replay. After that, it goes away. But you'll be automatically notified via email. If you sign up for this workshop, then you get automatic emails. So they it will send you out the link. Uh, by in the morning, you should be able to see another link that says the replay is live. So I'm going to introduce it from here as the beginning. So that way, when we share this with other folks in the future, uh, we'll be able to just begin officially here. OK, so welcome to Secrets of Mental and Emotional Wellness. This is our five week online workshops that we have been sharing on Mondays and Thursdays. My name is Chance, U.S. Navy veteran, number one best-selling author, and also I serve as a minister. One of the things we're able to do is we like to be able to help give people wisdom and knowledge in different areas of their life, physical, spiritual, financial, uh, health-wise. Uh, we like to also talk about professional, personal, and professional development, and that's what we do here every single Thursday. We added an extra day for the sake of our student friends who need some um, extra um, stuff to do with, for credits at the University of Southern Indiana. So these presentations, unlike most of our regular presentations, are gonna be very academic and technical, but nonetheless, um, our guest presenters, they break it down in lay terms as well. So if by chance you are not in academia or you are on here just because you saw that, um, um, invitation somewhere, just know that it's still going to be good. What I do is at the end, I try to ask some question. For me, I represent the lay folks, right? So I'll be able to ask a few questions to help um, solidify some of the message and to be able to get some of the stuff broken down for, for, for all of us. So everyone is going to be blessed. Everyone is going to have some information that they can use. But again, uh, we know that um, some of the students are using this material to be able to write papers and finish their class. Okay, so we've had some awesome presenters already. Uh, we've had uh, uh, Robert Lewis on already. Uh, we had Dr. Donna Cooper on. Uh, last time I think we did uh, Jerry Tamayo as well. And so they've talked about resiliency. We've covered some of that already. Uh, we've talked about stress management. Uh, we have other things coming up. Well, tonight, we're definitely going to be dealing with disaster and trauma. And then on Thursday, I mean, yes, this coming Thursday, we're going to have Mr. Chong on, uh, who's going to be dealing somewhat with addiction and recovery. Then followed by that, after that, we have uh, Dr. Judith Fisher coming on. And there are two others that we already have secured for the final two presentations. So I'm really, really looking forward to all this learning that we've been doing together. This will be the general uh, outline for the night. Right, the next slide coming up, I'm gonna be introducing our guest presenter for tonight. Then she will present uh, for us a full lecture for about 45 minutes or so. Then I will interview her for 10 minutes and then you will be able to ask questions for another 10 to 15 minutes or so. And then we'll close and that will be a wrap, okay? So let's go. If you have any questions again, please put them in the comments. Uh, the comment uh, is right below this video. You can type in any time that you would like to ask a question or uh, just give some affirmation on the material that you are learning. Okay, tonight's presenter is Dr. Shirley Barbosa. Now, she is a friend as well as a mentor in this area. I ask her a lot of questions. And so um, she also uh, goes to our church as well, but she's very much involved in every aspect of health and well-being. So she's a graduate of um, uh, Human of Mexico, born and raised in Brazil. So she's fluent in several languages, Spanish, Portuguese, and of course, English. Dr. Barbosa practices as a naturopathic physician in McAllen, Texas, with 12 years of experience in private practice, providing alternative and complementary healthcare to Nature's Remedies Center. That's her business, that's her local practice here. And of, of course, she has counseled and treated many, many in individuals through the use of natural occurring um, things, uh, anything that you have to do as far as getting better. I mean, I have not yet been able to stun her with one question, 
every time we have some kind of a question, she always has a wonderful answer. So her journey, if you go on her website, uh, maybe she can say a little bit more, but um, if you go on her website and you read her bio about her, um, it has a nice story of how she was able to get into medicine, uh, you know, through uh, her family's background. So I, I found that to be a very uh, neat story. Nonetheless, again, you're going to be hearing from her tonight. Dr. Barbosa, thank you so much for the time. Thank you for making it out and fitting us into your busy schedule. Uh, the presentation is yours. We look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. And I hope today will be more a talking than a, I don't want to be a speaker. It's just I want to interact with you guys. And uh, today we're going to talk about disaster and trauma. And uh, and now, right now, we are responding to the coronavirus uh, breakout. So we have some problems that we saw. Um, my experience dealing with uh, this past month, what do we see? What happened? So as emergency responders, uh, we can go under stress. So sources of stress for us will be uh, like when you see someone suffering, and you're going to feel for them too. And uh, and a risk of a personal harm, like in this case, you will feel like you can get sick. And uh, intensive workloads, like for example, if you work at AR and it has a big lines, and if you work as ICU with a lot of critical patients, because we heard that the COVID, uh, they can go respiratory failure, and that takes a lot of work. And also, if you separation from a family, <laughs> I myself uh, was separated from my family because I have grandchildren, and uh, they got scared for me to see my own uh, grandchildren because I'm a doctor, and uh, I have the risk to to uh, be infected by the the virus and others. So to protect my family, uh, we stay away from each other, <laughs> and. Uh, so mental health uh, for emergency responders. Uh, first thing we have to be prepared. Uh, we have to learn how we can prevent going through stress. And if we are stressed out, we need to prevent how to manage that, that stress, because this is very important. Like for example, stress prevention. You have to train and know your job very well. On this case, you need to know the symptoms of the, the COVID that we uh, we have to know. Like, for example, the hospitals only accept the people that have cough, fever, and uh, respiratory distress. That's the only people they accept, and they will do the test of, uh, to see if they have the virus. So we have to know very well our 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 job. So what are we doing? Uh, what's happening? Where we work? If it's ER or if it's a clinic, uh, we need to know the guidelines and know the incident command system. Like for example, if I am working at ER, I should uh, I should know when I receive a patient. I have the the doctor. I have the nurse uh, in charge. And we have to know your chains of command. That would help a lot. So it can help you to uh, make decisions. And uh, and while we are working on this uh, period that we have overload of work, we have to have a good uh, uh, leave and a health lifestyle, for example. You have to do regular physical activity. If you don't have time to do exercise, just walking will be an option and a health diet. So don't go outside and drinking cough to stay awake because it's going to make it worse. You're going to crash and it's not going to help you. So it's better to drink water, a lot, plenty of water. And uh, and you uh, you try to keep yourself emotional, have an emotional stability. So don't uh, overthinking and uh, the situation. Just um, try to do your best. Well, for stress management, uh, the first thing, like, for example, if you are working with a group of people, for example, nurses, uh, if they are Christian, so uh, you can pray or uh, meditate together before you start your work. And also you can, uh, for stress relief, 
you can uh, practice some breathing exercise that I'm going to show you in other slides how to do it. And walking will be a good exercise because right now all the gyms are closed, so you don't have too much option. But you can walk. And, uh, and another thing is you have to balance your hormones because when you are under stress, you fabricate a lot of cortisol and the cortisol lowers estrogen and testosterone. So you're going to be dragging yourself. So you need to balance your hormones. You have to do something to control your stress because the stress, you release a lot of cortisol. So, and then you, your um, hormones is going to be down and it's going to affect your emotional. Um, and also avoid the sugar intake because when you take too much sugar, like for example, if you take a lot of coffee or uh, uh, sugar, or if you take sodas, or if you take juices, they have a lot of sugar. And when, the, uh, when you take a lot of sugar intake, they rise insulin, you become insulin resistant, and then the hormone production goes down. And then it's gonna, uh, you're gonna have mood swings, and it'll be hard for you to handle the stress of your work. Also, you need to get uh, adequate sleep. I know when we are working, like for example, in ER, when I was in, going through medical school, sometimes we are about to rest and then we have to get up and go work and see patients. And uh, sometimes we're very tired, but however you have a chance to get some sleep and some rest, you do that. And like if you have a, a schedule that would allow you to sleep overnight, try to be in bed 10 o'clock p.m. Because in order to receive the hormones, you have to be sleeping two hours to receive the growth hormone and other hormones that you need uh, for to be have a good disposition the next day. So if you'll be able to be in bed 10 o'clock every day, do it and uh, get up and go walk and then go work and have a good breakfast because the first meal should be uh, the strong meal of the day. You like you eat like a breakfast like a king. Um, then lunch like a prince, and uh, and dinner like a pauper. So if you do that, you're gonna uh, do your work very well because you're not overloading your stomach with foods. And try to be vegetarian because if you eat a lot of meat, uh, the meat takes like 48 hours to digest. So your brain you won't be able to think uh, quite right soon. So plant-based protein will be a best uh, way to eat during this stress time. Adequate amounts of vitamin B6, uh, the brain likes the B. So instead of caffeine, the uh, good option would be B. B12 will give you energy, but B6 uh, uh, will keep, uh, like a complex of B6 would help your brain uh, to keep like a sanity in your device. And here it's a, a breathing exercise. That's very easy to do. It's just, uh, you can see the picture. Uh, breathe in, you count one, two, three, four, and then hold four, and then blow one, two, three, four, and then uh, five, six, and eight, and then you do again. That's a very er easy exercise to, to do it. So if you don't have time to walk, at least when you feel over helmet or stress out, you stop and do that exercise. And you can do, anytime you have a break, you can do that exercise. The next one is another uh, exercise, breathing to relax, uh, to relax. Inhale, it counts of four. Hold, counts to seven. And exhale, counts for eight. So it'll be a very easy exercise. The next exercise, you have to sit down on that position. And then you get a, a balloon like this. And then you have to blow, uh, like, a, just to, uh, blow once and, and to float up the balloon. I'm going to see if I can do it in just a second. And now to do the correct, this exercise, so maybe I'm not going to do correct the first time because you need practice. But you get your hands like this and you go three times. If you do three times, oh, I did three times. If you do like that, it's correct way to breathe. So you can sit down in that position and do that many times per day. That's a very easy exercise. It's going to expand your lungs and oxygenate your brain. So this is an easy exercise to teach everyone how to do it. So you have three options of a breathing 
technique. And this one, uh, I guess you're going to have this PowerPoint there. It's self-explanatory, and that you can do is Japanese shitsu uh, for you to uh, release anxiety and stress. So I think you're going to have a copy of this on your slides so you can practice self-explanatory. Now, another thing that happened, even happened to me during this time uh, responding to COVID, uh, like sometimes you can burn yourself out. And this is the sign of a burnout because I went through one of those things too. Like you can feel like sad, depression, and apathy. And you can get easily frustrated. You snap on people and blame others and you be uh, have irritability. And you can be lacking feelings, like you can be indifferent to people. And or you can isolate yourself or, dis or disconnect from others. And, and you're going to notice, too, like poor self-care hygiene, like not brushing your hair, not changing clothes. Or you can be tired, exhausted, over, or overwhelmed. And feeling, it, you can have the feeling like that you are a failure. That is not you can do to help people. Or you I can feel that you're not doing a good job. So this is really signs of burnout. So that means you're not taking breaks, you're not sleeping well, you're not eating well, and you're overworking, so it's on you. So if you work in a team, you recognize that you're going through that or a friend is going through that, you need to counsel that friend uh, to, um, to take care of herself. Signs of secondary traumatic stress, worry and fear. Uh, this one was the main problem that I saw now during uh, responding uh, the COVID. Like, for example, uh, as a doctor, and I had a lot of friends, doctor and uh, friends that are nursing, one of the main problems that uh, people have agencies was like, for example, if they have uh, uh, 60 nurses to work on the field, like maybe only 20 offer to, to work they were scared. So the main problem with this response right now was fear. And fear usually is lack of knowledge. Like for example, if they know how the virus acts, or if they know properly how the virus pro, um, spreads, and if they know all the signs and symptoms of the, the disease, and uh, if it was really lack of knowledge, but I saw that people refused to work and the same thing with the patients that were chronic degenerative patients that they needed the nurse visit uh, monthly or sometimes weekly basis or daily basis, they refused to see the nurses because they, the nurses are in contact with the patients. So they were scared to come, uh, the nurse to visit their house because they were scared of getting contaminated with the, the virus. And the same thing, the workers that were responding uh, they were scared to be on the field because they have families and they didn't want uh, their families to get sick or their children to get sick. And another thing that happened when they are married or when they are grandma, like I am, and uh, the family refused to see us or allowed us to see the kids because they were afraid that we're going to contaminate them. But on, on that case, it's just the lack of uh, knowledge. Because if the worker use the protection and uh, carefully uh, know uh, what they are doing, so I don't think we're going to spread the virus. And uh, I think uh, uh, that fear should be uh, like when we see people thinking like that, we need to take the time and explain that uh, it's... Uh, we need to explain so they can have an understand and uh, so we can perform a work. And like, for example, the patients that are cr uh, chronic degenerative disease, they need to receive our visit. So we have to sit down and explain for them uh, that uh, we are taking care of ourselves and uh, we're going to do our best uh, that we can to help them. And, uh, and we're going to use the protection equipment to see them. And uh, stand by all the time. Like, for example, people uh, under stress, 
like uh, if they are uh, a traumatic already, they don't want to go home. They want to be working without stop. So that's a sign that something's wrong with that worker. And, uh, and you have to see the physical uh, signs of stress too. Like for example, the person would have, can have nightmares and frequent thoughts about the traumatic situation and the feeling that the uh, uh, feeling that the others traumas is yours so they're going to take others problem so the main thing on this response right now that we face was fear and that was the what causes everything the fear um the fear um uh block people to see uh the big pictures behind <laughs> everything like for me uh the cause of the fear the main cause of the fear was lack of knowledge and uh, and uh, when you go in fear you have the feelings of uh, helpless and then you go in distress and then if you are a nurse on the field or a doctor or a nurse patricia or um you're going to be incapable to perform, to perform 100% of your job because fears blocks your minds. So you won't be able to work to give your best and can paralyze you to think straight. And one, the main, uh, the main person that is going to suffer if you have fear, one that you're not going to go work because many nurses chose not to go work because they fear uh, getting sick and making their family sick. But uh, the main person that is going to suffer uh, with uh, the fear is going to be the patient because um, it's going to lead you to a uh, lack of sympathy and then may turn the scale, uh, it's balanced life or death and can cause to go down the, uh, to the grave a patient who otherwise might be recovered. So the patients depend on the nurse <laughs> and depend on the doctor because the doctor just prescribe. But the ones that is going to work on the field and help and be with the patient are the nurses or the nurse practitioners. So they need to um, be in good health and good state of mind so they cannot be in uh, fear. So and to avoid fear, they really need to uh, get some knowledge and protect themselves. So they shouldn't be afraid to go to work. And how we stop the fearing? First, do not fear. Don't think about and avoid the news and avoid the mood media. If it's only things negative, uh, block. And, uh, and if you're a Christian and you, all your colleagues are Christian, pray or meditate. And then the main thing, acquire knowledge. Because once you have knowledge is power. So if you know how to treat the disease and if you know how to care the patient with COVID and uh, if you protect yourself, so you should not be afraid. And then trust. <laughs> First trust God and then trust yourself. Uh, the best thing when you work, like even for a doctor, uh, it, like a, it's better for a doctor to work in partners because if I go down and I cannot think straight, I should my partner should be in good condition and he should advise me, and uh, so we help each other. The same thing like when you attend a disaster or a trauma event, uh, it's better for you to work in partners. Like for example, uh, when you work in a team, you can use the body system, like su uh, support and monitor each others. Like, for example, you can check if you are in stress or if your colleagues are under stress, if your wor over, uh, uh, workload is heavy, so you can share and make a schedule and make sure you guys are safe following the guidelines for the events that you guys are working for. Now here, it's a response self-care techniques. First, you're going to use the PPR, the, you're going to use personal protection equipment. So, and at the next picture, you're going to see what was required for the attending the, the COVID. Uh, limit your work hours if you can, like if you work in partners and doing it, so then you can say you do uh, make a schedule and then delegates. 
and then you do this, I do this, so delegate things. So don't try to do everything by yourself. Uh, work in teams, uh, take breaks, but don't drink cough. <laughs> you can drink uh, Gatorade or uh, water with minerals and that will uh, give you energy. Or you can drink uh, B-complex, it would help you too. Uh, talk, express your feelings, experience. Like for example, if it's something you're not feeling good because you saw something that uh, uh, overwhelmed you, just talk to your friend, to to another nurse or to your friend, whoever is working with you. So express your feelings. Don't keep to yourself because then it's going to get worse. And then practice breathing and relaxation techniques. Uh, the three ones that I showed uh, the previous um, slides. Maintain a health diet, sleep and exercise. So the best diet for you to do during uh, this time, uh, like if you are working and responding uh, events, a trauma or the, or the COVID uh, in the hospital, uh, the best diet will be vegan, vegetarian, uh, like the original diet. So that will be veg vegetables, uh, fruits, water, nuts, grains, and uh, good fats will be avocado. And uh, so if I know because now everything is closed, but even though like if they have salad, that will be a good option. If they have a smoothie, green smoothie will be uh, an option instead of eating uh, heavy meals and carbs. And if sleep, if you can, try to be in bed at 10 o'clock every day, try to get up early, and before you go to work, go walk one hour if you can, and then have a good breakfast and then go work. So exercise will be walking and the best to, uh, time to walk will be early in the morning before you go to work. Drink water with minerals. Like if you don't have, um, if you don't have access to the minerals, you can uh, do your own minerals. Like you can put a dash of sea salt, a dash of brown sugar and a dash of uh, baking soda. You can do your own minerals, waters and drink. That will be better than drinking caffeine. And also because a lot of people were afraid about uh, getting infected by the virus, but uh, one way that you can avoid that, one is using your protection equipment and the other one is strength your immune system by eating a good diet, sleeping well, and you can take vitamin A, vitamin D and vitamin C daily that will improve your immune system. And even if you get sick, you can get very mild and you, you know, it's not going to take longer to get well. And maybe you don't even get sick. Uh, so uh, like vitamin A, you can take one a day. Vitamin D, 10,000, uh, you can take one per day. And vitamin C, the body requires 250 milligrams uh, three times a day with meals. Like if you want to have a good collagen, you have to have 20% uh, of your meals um, plant-based uh, protein. And you need vitamin C three times a day, 250 milligrams. And you need uh, uh, magnesium. Magnesium is very good to take now to, to avoid stress. Like you can take uh, ionic magnesium, one teaspoon three times a day. Uh, sublingual, and that will help with the stress. Actually, magnesium, it's uh, something that you can take daily. It's a must because most of the metabolic functions depend on magnesium. So you see, I teach you to, for the immune system, vitamin A, D, and C. For the stress, magnesium. And for the brain, to keep in good uh, state, com uh, B6 complex. And here was your PPE for, uh, for COVID, um, healthcare professional. And then you see that you have the goggles, you have the, the masks, you have gloves, and you have your um, clothes. So that was the protection if you are in, uh, in contact with the, the COVID-19. Uh, disasters and servicing uh, training. So this one, um, like for example, in 1995, 
I um, I did all the courses from the America Red Cross, and I was part of the team uh, responding disaster. So this one, you guys can. Uh, I was part of the team. So if you want to be prepared for future disasters and trauma disasters and events, you need to prepare yourself. Like I say on the, the first slides, you need to know your job. You need to know what you're doing. And you really need to know uh, what you need to do to avoid stress or to manage stress. Because when you attend a disaster, you do overwork and you do get in stress. And uh, you need to know how to avoid it and you need to know very well your job. So I put those two there, American Red Cross and Adventist uh, Disaster uh, Service. Uh, so I did some courses and I did have my ID to respond to disaster. And I think you can take some courses too. And uh, another one that I took was this one, uh, AMA. Uh, it's called Advanced Disaster Life Support. It's for any event, by, uh, by a war or any disaster response. So you need to be prepared to attend a disaster. So uh, I advise you guys to take some courses and uh, like um, if in your area, be in contact with the Red Cross or any uh, Seventh-day Adventist or MMA and make teams. So when you uh, go to an uh, event like we are going on now, you are prepared and you, uh, and you have a, a good team to work responsible, professionally, and uh, know how can handle stress and prevent stress because that's the secret for to do well and uh, when you attend a disaster. And uh, I, the, the, to put this PowerPoint presentation, I got the C, uh, CDC guidelines. I use those two books. Uh, it's called Mind, Character, Personality, Volume 1 and 2 by Ellen G. White. Over there was a big chapter uh, explaining about fear. So the fear is, uh, was the main problem that we uh, face with this uh, coronavirus response, uh, response responding was fear from both sides, workers and patients. So I guess uh, what we really need to know is uh, uh, learn and teach. That's uh, what we need to put more information because to avoid fear. And, uh, and another uh, resource that I use is Change Your Brain, Change Your Life by uh, Dr. Daniel Amen. And he's very good. Um, about, uh, he has a book that explains uh, how to handle stress, uh, how to improve your life by changing your brain. And also, you can change your brain by changing your diet. And the best diet that you can have during this time, now the stress, the ones that are inside the house, the ones that are essentials, is having a good diet. So, uh, a vegetarian is the best diet or vegan. Vegan, it's uh, animal-free products, like uh, nothing with uh, no dairy. And another thing that will be good that uh, not eating things that inflame your brain, like gluten and uh, uh, gluten. And uh, the main thing is gluten and dairy. That's who uh, increase inflammation. And that's so when your brain is inflamed, uh, you can go in stress or depression. Depression actually is, is inflammation in the brain. But if you, we avoid uh, foods that inflame our uh, bloodstream and your brain, you can handle better uh, this time of um, what are we going through for the ones that is uh, responding and the ones that are in, in the house or for the patients that are sick. All right. Uh, so now... If you have any questions for me, I can answer for you. And I hope it was helpful, but uh, you can ask me questions right now. All right. Uh, you can finish clicking through the slide there to talk about your contact information. Of course, I have a final slide on there, but please go ahead and 
right here there you go yeah, okay you talk about this a little bit yes uh i'm here in mcallen texas and my uh off school nature's remedy center 508 northern street c10 mcallen texas and my phone number is 956-631-1664 and uh, here's my website www.naturesremediescenter.com and my email is naturesremedyctr at yahoo.com i'm serving this community uh, my last 12 years but i'm serving the community and the valley for 21 years here wow that uh, i'm a speaker and I'm a teacher, so I, I helping this community, teaching them about health and how to change their lifestyle. Awesome! Thank you so much. Alrighty, yeah. so at this time we'll proceed with a few interview questions, and then of course, if you have any questions, you can begin posting them uh, even now in the chat right here. Uh, so, Doc, I really want to thank you for your service in many capacities as well. Um, of course, you've done a lot of presentations for us. Um, this is one of the things that I appreciate. Like I said, I do know her personally as well. Um, we actually, what we used to do, we our church ran a uh, community service uh, every single Thursday. And um, this is also part of why we're doing it online every Thursday too. But um, she came there for many months, actually. So we were trying to figure out how else can we educate the public on health and so forth. So we began to open up the community services uh, for health and you would come and you would give those lectures, um, you know, and so we really appreciate that. So she's really, when she says she served the community, she serves. I mean, she's done presentations for me before. Um, I even asked her to preach um, on, on health related aspects as well uh, in these type of areas. So thank you so much. Uh, now, Doc, I want to uh, go back and uh, bring out a few extra pointers from your slides there. Okay, let's see. Let's start with, um, let's deal with the, the fear factor because fear truly is, is something that immobilizes us. But uh, nonetheless, there is legitimate concern though because I think, uh, can you talk a bit, how do we balance being concerned and not going off the edge where fear now gets the best of us. Well, I think that when this, like where we went through now, because as a doctor, I faced that. And also friends that are nurse, they face too, like people that had agency. The main problem with us, they refuse to work because yeah. they have families. The nurse uh, got scared to go work and get sick and bring disease to their family. So that's so we had a very uh, little people that was willing to work, and I think mm -hmm. it was the main problem was knowledge, because there was a new uh, problem that we faced like we never had this problem before. So it was uh, a, a lot of lack of information. That's all it was. I think I, if we had a little bit more information, like uh, uh, telling the people, the workers and telling the patients uh, what it really is about, that they are safe, uh, we won't have faced that problem because only few nurses were working uh, to attend the population because, and we cannot force nobody to work. Right, and, right. And another thing that really happened, uh, people that uh, needs our uh, like weekly uh, to visitation, like nurse uh, wise, or for me as a doctor, they need to come once a month to the to the office. They didn't come, and oh, they, wow. and they are sick people. So what I did, uh, because uh, like we attending only urgencies right now, and uh, providing the supplements that they are taking if they have high blood pressure or diabetes. So I start going on their house and delivery, and uh, okay. if we and if they were too sick, I'll delivery. But uh, the, like, uh, I think it was the main problem with this now that we faced was lack of knowledge. If they have a better knowledge of how the disease is spread and if they are protect, there is no way they can get contaminated because they are using protection. So I think it was lack of information. Yeah, I, I, and I'm, that's why we also doing these presentations because you know I just ha I had sat on two board meetings, one last weekend and one just a, a while ago. Uh, but one of the things that we discussed was the reality is that even when after this is lifted, 
when it's okay to meet again. Uh, we, 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 we already believe that there's going to be a transition and it's not because people are still going to be fearful of, yeah. of, of <laughs> gathering. So it will take a time to, for people to begin to trust. Like, for example, we even had a, a major children's program, but we just said, listen, let's just cancel. Let's just cancel it. Because again, even you put yourself in some people's position, you know, they, they're going to be um, not not okay uh, with that. But like you said, we got to educate and be concerned at the same time because you share the story, even for the patient where the, the, the doctors and nurses are wearing all the, the, the appropriate PPEs, but yet they didn't even want the doctors or the nurse to, to see them because they thought maybe they got it from, they got the virus from another patient and bring it to them. Yes. And for me, it was hilarious because I am a doctor. So my own family <laughs> did that to me. Like uh, I am the virus itself, in other words, just because <laughs> I'm a doctor. <laughs> You're getting it from other people and bring it to them. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, are. But they are yeah, afraid. Yeah. If you use your protection, they should not be afraid. You know, if you yeah. wash your hands all the time, if you are using your protection, they should not be afraid of you. So yeah. that, but it's hard, you know. <laughs> and that's why we are concerned. Like I say, I mean, some of the, the folks on here are students and professionals. You know, nurses, nurse practitioners. Um, the thing is, you're right. They have families too. And what what, what we are realizing, that's why many of us are sympathetic. Uh, to healthcare workers, because as you just noted, you know, if you have a staff of 60, 40 people and only 20 people have to do the work, then that itself is a recipe that leads to the thing you talk about burnout, right? Yes. Because they have to take up the slack for a lot of other people, so it kind of more pressure. Yes, and that's the one and the thing that the reason that happens is burned out of people. And then when they burned up, they get stressed out and uh, some cases that I saw too, like they will work in the hospital and the only thing they're talking, they're going to be sick. Mm. So uh, like uh, when we, uh, I think we should have meetings on the hospital and uh, the, to teach the people that is going to work and face the problem to give confidence for them. Because the, the only thing that they are talking, oh, we're going to get sick, we're going to sick. They didn't get sick, but they were thinking that they're going to sick and the fear took over of them. Right. And uh, and that's what paralyze you to do your job. Yes. And another thing, the family didn't want them to go home because they thought they are going to con contaminate. So they have to be isolated from wow. the family. So that's we are working already. We are overworking. And then we cannot even be in touch with our family because they are afraid that we're going to get sick. And then wow. inside of our work, people are talking only, oh, we're going to get sick. We might get sick. But uh, we didn't get sick yet. We just thinking. <laughs> wow. So, and for those of you, again, who are on here, that's another reason. If you're not in the healthcare field, I re that's why we should really see our healthcare providers right now as true heroes because they too are dealing with these situations where they are trying to uh, save lives, but even their own family, uh, because of, and it is understandable, okay, but their own family, you know, are, are cautious. So now it's like, what do you do? I can't even go home to my own family. And so we really want to be uh, sympathetic and uh, well wishes for, for our healthcare providers out there. So we want to thank them. Last question, and then we're going to, I have a few here, two here already. Um, now, when it comes to um, nurses and so forth and healthcare workers in general, everyone in the allied health field, uh, taking care of themselves. Each presenter, of course, you know, this is like, oh, this is what we do for the patients, right? But how are they able now to take this information? Um, maybe some who are not working. What should they be doing during the downtime to prepare themselves to go back to work or to pivot in some way, shape or form? Yeah, like for example, the secrets, if it is we have to face again, uh, like the ones that stay home, uh, like the secret is uh, to detox the body, to uh, to have a good diet, to be a vegetarian, to sleep well, to exercise, and be alkaline. Because it doesn't okay. matter what you're going to uh, face, stress or disease, if you are alkaline and clean, even if you get sick, it's not going to be so bad. So that's uh, how, um, like to be prepared. Like if you have a, a clean body and a alkaline, you're gonna think straight, and you'll be able to handle, and you're not gonna be so uh, you're not you're not gonna be uh, have fear. 
like you can think you, your right. brain is going to be clear so you do better if you do that even if fear, you're fear has torment uh, for those of you who follow us at strategic secrets we talk about fear i have a a few blog posts on that. We have a book here called Strategic Secrets, uh, where we talk about how fear immobilizes us and how we can rise um, above our fear. But again, uh, there is you know, a legitimate concern that we can have and there is uh, practical things that we can do. But fear, when it is pushed to the extreme and we begin to shut down and not do things, then we have to check those uh, fear. And that's why uh, those two books uh, I do recommend them also. Okay, let me take a question here from um, Hector and then I'll take one from Raul. I'm gonna broadcast it to the group here so you can read it. Uh, it says, Hector says, can you elaborate more on the role of magnesium? Can you elaborate more on the role of magnesium? Yes, magnesium, it's, uh, it's responsible for all the metabolic functions of your body and like would help you for stress. Because if you take, like, a, we have ionic magnesium, you can take one teaspoon three times a day with each meal. The magnesium will help the relax, lower your blood pressure, and uh, by being relaxed, so decrease your stress too. So magnesium is very important. You should take lifetime. If you take a magnesium chloride, you can take 500 milligrams uh, three times a day. And if you, it's a magnesium orotate, 500 milligrams three times a day. Magnesium is not only important for the metabolic functions of your body, but for collagen. Like uh, if you want to have a good collagen, not clogged up your arteries by the wrong diet that we have, might have. So if uh, to have a good collagen is two, uh, magnesium, 500 milligrams or 250 milligrams three times a day, vitamin C, 350 milligrams three times a day, and 20% of your meal daily should be 20% plant-based protein. Okay. Yes, so meta uh, magnesium is more, very important on this time, right now, for stress. All righty, so let's make sure we get that in there. Next questions come from uh, Raul. He says, you mentioned that in your professional opinion that depression is related to inflammation in the brain can you please elaborate on that? And also, how is this related to serotonin evidence as we know it in the medical community? Twofold question. Uh, two, okay. The uh, information, like depression, really is, is uh, inflammation in your brain. Your brain is on fire. And you can get uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Amen, and he do uh, a test that called SPEC of the brain. And then you can see that when you have depression, your brain is light up, the whole thing. So that's means inflammation. And many things can cause inflammation. And like, for example, gluten and dairy, it's uh, the gluten has gliadin and the dairy has casein and they go in your bloodstream and they inflame the brain. They are neurotoxic. So there is Many, many things that cause brain inflammation. Another one could be caffeine. So it's uh, like if you want to, like for example, if a, a person has uh, depression and you give a pizza or gluten or bread for this person to eat, and if they have severe depression, in half an hour they can have a, a crisis, or in half an hour they can have visions like a, a schizophrenic and they not schizophrenic it's just because they ate the the gluten and uh, you can you can check that there is a doctor uh doctor uh they, he has a lot of videos that uh, is playing about uh, uh blaylock dr blaylock and he's playing about uh, foods that causes neurotoxicity interesting there's a follow-up question by Hector as well concerning, mm -hmm. I think it is the magnesium that he mentioned. Um, 500 milligrams, three times a day is the recommended for all adults question. Yes, yeah, so like that. that. If it's, yeah, no, if it's a, it's a magnesium, like a chloride or orotate, could be 500 milligrams three times a day. But how the magnesium okay. works, like for example, if it for me, uh, my, uh, if from, for me, my body requires only 250 milligrams. When I increase, uh, increase 500 milligrams, 
uh, I'm going to start having diarrhea. So for me, it's too much. Then I decrease to 400 three times a day or 300, and my body stops. Uh, if I don't have diarrhea, my body needs it. So one is overdose of magnesium when you have a diarrhea. <laughs> if you not have a loses to another diarrhea, you, your body is craving for. So okay. that's how we try to try treat the magnesium. Like, uh, okay. yes, you can start with 500 milligrams three times a day. If you don't have loses to no diarrhea, it's work for you. And uh, apart from the moment that you have diarrhea, you can lower the dose. But it's required three times per day because uh, the, the body needs to do the collagen. If you have magnesium, uh, vitamin C, and 20% uh, plant base, you um, can avoid, if you eat correctly, a clogged up arteries. Wonderful. Uh, the question, Doc. Um, now, of course, uh, this is surrounding primarily our current crisis, um, coronavirus, but at the same time, uh, trauma disasters in general um, have mm -hmm. an effect on the our physiology, mental and emotional. How about other things like that? For example, how how does it play into, let's say, childhood traumas or um, you know, even, you know, people going through relational problems, uh, domestic abuse, as we saw in the pandemic, too, that is an, uh, on the rise. Actually, domestic violence is on the yes. rise. And these can be traumatic. Kids are seeing these things happening at home, whereas, of course, both parents were now out of the picture um, during a regular workload. But now everybody's home. They might be seeing more of that. But how can these kind of traumas and disasters that happen to individuals, people may be fleeing from other countries as refugees, but I'm just trying to get a, a sense of the, 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 the biology behind what happens when a person is experiencing severe trauma, mental and emotional kind, how does that affect the, the body and the immune system specifically? Well, when you go to a trauma like that, the first thing that you're gonna produce is cortisone. And yeah. when you uh, when you're high in cortisone, you're gonna load the main uh, uh, hormones that you need: uh, the progesterone for and the men testosterone. So you're gonna lower, and then you can get very easy in depression because it's, by affecting those hormones, you can have mood swings. And then in proper diet, because most of people are unhappy, they go on carbs, low carbs, and make it worse. So that means they're going to increase the inflammation on in the brain and then increase the depression. So that we need to learn how to handle stress because it's stress kills <laughs> and make you very sick. Like you yes. can get very sick and die from uh, from stress. And uh, like, for example, the abuse that is going on between families is uh, one main thing is they not handle the stress very well. So they high in cortisone plus right. their diet is incorrect. And plus the liquor stores are open, so they, they can go buy alcohol, uh, cigarettes, so that's, and usually person, uh, when people are stressed out, uh, they have addiction. So by, uh, they're gonna increase those addictions, so it's not gonna help them. So they're gonna inflame more of the brain. And more brain inflammation, you can go in deep depression, and if your body is inflamed, the liver is gonna suffer. And uh, like people who is anger, anger, it's the liver. So once the liver is inflamed, you have uh, anger attacks. <laughs> so uh -huh. it's one thing, other thing. Gotcha. Wow. Wow. Alrighty. Uh, we have uh, let's. Uh, we have about two two more questions. If you guys uh, want to put post some more questions, uh, there's one for Martha. Let me broadcast mm -hmm. it here for others to read as well. Uh, Martha Thomas asks, uh, "What about B vitamins? Uh, they are important too." correct um and it can help with mood and stress is that correct yes B vitamins. yes uh we uh you know like we uh, like for the best food for our body will be the regional diets like a vegan diet like a uh, vegetables fruits so water seeds and nuts but the brain has something called brain foods and that's the foods for the brain though so, uh, number one is be complex and the B6 uh, is uh, called B6, uh, but it's a complex, come 12, comes everything. The another thing that the, the brain foods is called zinc. And another thing is lecithin. Lecithin 
and another two, uh, and the other one is uh, magnesium, and the other one is iodine. Okay, this is called brain foods. Doesn't matter how sick you are, doesn't matter how stressed you are, doesn't matter if you are under pressure. That's called brain foods. Mm -hmm. And if you avoid the foods that cause inflammation, and you take these brain foods, B complex, zinc, lecithin, magnesium, and iodine your brain is going to feel better because it's the right food for the brain. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. You're an expert indeed. <laughs> Any other question, folks? Any other questions? Alrighty. Let me put back up um, as you, okay. I see another one coming in here. Okay. Raul is asking, uh, what are your thoughts about teas such as uh, green tea for energy energy the the problem that is caffeine they have uh, double effects like it give you energy for 30 minutes and then the press zero the best thing because uh, green tea has antioxidants but it has caffeine so the best thing to drink is OP like uh, uh, drinks uh, uh, water with minerals you can uh, add minerals and your water will give you energy and another thing that it can give you energy will be iodine will give you energy b12 will give you energy any instead of drinking a coffee in the morning eating an apple will give you energy because it has potassium so green tea it's uh it's it has a it's a, it's an antioxidant but the problem has caffeine anything that has caffeine like for example if you overdose in caffeine you're gonna have a syndrome that called myelin thinning, and then you're gonna be very forgetful. <laughs> As oh. uh, when you stop the caffeine, the myelin goes back, and then, like for example, the symptoms between uh, between lack of sleep and caffeine is different. Like for example, if you have myelin thinning, I can go to my car to close, uh, like I can go to my car and to close the door, and then I come to the office. I don't remember if I closed the car or not, because they, the myelin is thin, the neurons, the, the, the information doesn't travel. So that's me. I don't remember because the information didn't get to my brain. Now, lack of sleep is different. Like, for example, I have my shoes and I'm going to put in a closet. And then when I see I'm in front of the refrigerator, open the door. <laughs> that's lack of sleep sleep deprivation so the symptoms are totally different from one another mm. okay but at the caffeine uh, doesn't matter if it's a green tea but if you overdose yourself at one time i was working in icu and then we have this uh, japanese man uh, like 91 years old looking great <laughs> but he used to drink uh, caffeine all the time and uh, he became forgetful one day and he put his feet on the top of uh, the heater and he boiled his feet, <laughs> but he looked young. <laughs> it's just that the myelin was too thin. He couldn't process it as well. So uh, what, what can folks do for energy though? Because the reality is, as you're saying, sometimes you do have these long hours. So are there any positive things or, or solutions or I guess other versions of teas that may help uh, people to, to get an extra boost of energy? Well, that the, what they can do is that uh, drink. Uh, uh, it's called liquids, uh, minerals, uh, minerals that, or like even a Gatorade will help. Like anything that has electrolytes will boost your energy. Or B12, sublingual, uh, or or eating an apple uh, kick your energy level. But at the like the the energy level, really, what we need to do is that liver gallbladder detox because uh, the energy has to do with the liver. If the liver is clogged up with uh, bio stones, and they cannot, uh, you're gonna be very tired. Like uh, you, you really need to detox your body and usually responsible for energy is the liver uh, toxicity. And also um, when you have uh, liver toxicity or colon, like very dirty. So if you want your energy level go up, you need to detox the body, the liver and the colon. Once you clean those two, energy is up. Then you're not going to depend on coffee or anything. It's a, you're right. going to have an energy. Awesome, awesome. 
All right, folks. Well, again, um, I want to encourage you, if you do want to follow up or learn more from uh, Dr. Barbosa, you can check out her website, naturesremediescenter.com. Uh, she is in the Valley in McAllen, not too far from where we are at the moment. Again, a number is also 956-631-1664. Just take a screenshot here and uh, reach out to her for more information. Uh, having said that, again, uh, Doctor, I really want to thank you so much for uh, spending this amount of time with us. Uh, we value it. We appreciate the insight, and uh, we learned quite a bit. Any any part in words? Any, I'm sorry? Any part in words? Any last uh, words of anything you want to share before we close up the broadcast? Okay. So the main problem with these events that we're going through was fear and stress. So uh, to correct the fear problem, acquire knowledge. And the stress, learn stress management, things that you can avoid, like a good diet and magnesium. <laughs> so simple <laughs> to start. And uh, so the main problem was uh, fear and stress. Fear and stress. Okay. All right, folks. Well, there you have it. Um, again, these webinars continue. This is number four. We have six more presentations to go on our secrets of mental and emotional health. You can definitely share the link and invite others so that they can sign up. It is strategicsecrets.com slash weekly webinar. Okay, strategicsecrets.com slash weekly webinar. You can invite someone or just uh, share the link uh, so they can join in when we go live. Next presentation will be on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. We have Mr. Chong who will be on. He is a licensed professional counselor and he will be dealing with, uh, dealing with the topic of addictions. So please come on and learn more with us. Thank you and um, good night, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, any closing comments? Let's see here. Munyet says, uh, thank you, Dr. Barbosa. Melissa says, thank you for the teaching. Pablo says, thank you. Uh, Martha well, Thomas says, great information. Thank you, Doc. They're, they're appreciating it. Uh, Barbara says also, thank you. Raul says, thank you so much. You're welcome. Wonderful. So folks appreciate you. And I really appreciate it too. Thank you a lot. And um, may God richly bless you. All right, folks, I'll see you again on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Good night. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. <laughs>